We are. <laughs> Isn't this great with technology? You've got Arena Scotland in Norway. And I'm here in Canada, and yet we are together, one, in this lovely broadcast that we're going to talk about allowing, are you allowing abundance? What could be stopping you from allowing it in your life? And we're going to come from two different perspectives. Arena has the whole background on feng shui, and then, you know, my conversation is a little bit about heart set. So it's just going to be a great one. I hope you grab yourself a cup of coffee, cup of tea, a juice, whatever you need, and just enjoy. And Ask us any questions along the way. Hi. I was so excited today touching this topic because every day I can hear, oh, I am stuck or I cannot get this one. And I'm always constantly scanning myself if I am moving in life or I am feeling stuck. Because if I'm feeling stuck, of course, first of all, I'm checking my Feng Shui and I want to ask you today, at the beginner, before I will go to that part, because the moment I became more involved with what you're doing, with what you do with your job, and you're working also with, with me as well in the free session, thank you so much for that experience. And uh, I want to ask you, what do you think? What could stop people from getting what they want or what kind of things they can change or what is your perspective on that? Sure. It's a great question because I, I think um, to start with, it's just a person's perception, right? You and I are coming from a perspective of we have the ability to tap in and tune in to are we feeling blocked? Are, you know, is, is the energy moving? Do I have to shift something? It's a, it's, a, it's a natural part of our day. Most people have been trained up, and I was too in that world that once upon a time, I call it once upon a time in the story, where you're looking, you're in amongst the world and you're still playing the role of a victim. You may even be in the role of starting to think that you have power, but you're still thinking it and then you're back and forth between looking looking and guessing and and so people limit themselves with their concepts of what they feel life is and in that process they are completely unaware of what's around them in terms of their language the energies of other people the energies of other nature so it it's an it's an ongoing awareness but the but I would say people are tapped and tuned into the wrong radio station most of the time. Okay, okay. So what what you will suggest when you mean uh, wrong uh, radio station? Well, it's like if you were listening, if you if you came home and you wanted peace and tranquility, and you turned on the heavy metal station. <laughs> okay. Um, that's not the station that you want. Now, most people stay plugged into that station. If they're having, if they wanted peace and tranquility and they came in and they, and life was like this, they, they somehow think that there's something they can do to shift that instead of just deciding, deciding to turn the station and to change what they can receive. And sometimes that is people do it in a variety of ways. It's becoming conscious of your breath. It is taking a walk, noticing nature, you know, cleaning up the kitchen, you know, doing something to shift your perception, shift your energy and shift your state of being. Yes. Yes. I'm totally, the radio station. I'm, I'm, I'm totally agree with that. And uh, uh, for me, if I'm looking that I'm kind of like, uh, I want to turn myself on to something and it is really important for me because i'm a physicist as well mm -hmm. that everything starts from the mo uh, from the moment you have to start the moment of uh if you need a success then take uh, one thing one little thing and if, and be sure that you can make it and just kind of cheat on the energy 
but for the sake of starting success in your life in the moment. You do that small thing and then you see how you done it very successfully. And you look at that and you say, wow, I'm so good at doing this. I can. It's happening and it's a success. Yes, it's like cheating. It's kind of like bringing up slowly, slowly. Then you do a second thing and it doesn't matter, like you say, even go to the kitchen and do some dishes. And, uh, and when it's everything clean and done, you look at that and you feel totally different. You feel kind of refreshed, you complete something. And then at that moment, the energy is created for you to step in into that thing what you need to do. Um, I would just like, uh, uh, during a conversation, it's always like popping up the things into me because that's why I like to create this uh, like kind of heart connected conversation with you, Jacqueline. Yeah, no, I think, I think, well, not I think, I feel there has been so much conversation in the world over history about what people did not want um, and versus what you do want. And I, I believe if you actually sit down with a person and connect heart to heart, every person is going to say they want peace in the world and they want love in the world and they want to feel supported and cared for and they nurtured and they want to feel like they have enough of what they're they're desiring in their life and this type of conversation that you and I are having arena is is that springboard for people that want to continually engage in a different realm uh, here uh, today actually I mentioned today in my invitation on the Facebook in the video that I would like to talk about the inner conflict because what we are facing and we cannot recognize what is it really inner conflict. Right. Uh, inner conflict is when you can experience in that one part of you want one thing, but another part of you are resisting to get that another thing. And it's natural and it's happening when you're evolving, when you're changing in the life, when you grow it's inevitable to have this kind of inner conflict. But this conflict can stop you. And this conflict can uh, create procrastination in your life. And to remove that conflict, it's really important to, to recognize it, to observe it, to stop in the moment. And that is called loving yourself. It's like loving yourself it's not only like opening heart with one part of you, opening heart fully with both parts. But to understand yourself, you just can simply create a conversation. When you are, for example, it's uh, this exercise is coming up from Tibet. It's called uh, spiritual triangle or doesn't matter how you will name it if you don't like the word spiritual but for example if you will imagine one part of you on the left side mm -hmm. and yes and that part usually if you are right-handed then left side will be associated for you with the person what, what a part of you doesn't agree to accept fully life doesn't agree fully with, with what you're doing. This part of you can tell you, you are not good enough, or this part can be resisting, giving you resistance in your life. And from the right side, imagine that part, it just really wants you to succeed, to move forward, to be creative, to be bold, and accepting life fully. Mm -hmm. And in this exercise, it's very interesting. When you look at one part, then you move your eyes to the left. You look there and kind of feel the energy on that side. Feel it. Feel that part, that pain of that part, why that part is still resisting it. And then the moment you start feeling it, start switching because the energy is coming through our eyes. And then you switch it to the right side. And this way, you are sitting 
and kind of like facilitator between two parts of you from left side and the right side. And you look in the left and looking at the right, looking at the left and looking at the right, and they feel the energy from both sides. And the moment you feel those energies, it will be the moment that they will combine together. So what, when they are combined together, allow them those energies, if you can imagine that they are dancing together. Imagine maybe some kind of music or sound is involved there, kind of movements, give it something, use all your imagination and creativity and absorb that energy fully inside your body. This way you could remove your inner conflict. And that's really, really powerful exercise. I'm doing this every time when I'm stepping on the next level that when I'm evolving, it's really, really nice. That's why I, I, I've just, it just popped up into me while you were talking about that, what we wish inside our heart and our mind is on the way. It's kind of like really important to connect, to have this connection to parts from left side and right side but another thing is we are connecting the same time the energies of our mind and our heart that's very, that's beautiful. very beautiful and and, and, and i want to just acknowledge, acknowledge patricia because oh. she's done i i can't actually read what you're saying because the sun is shining on the screen so i'll have to know that for next time um so can you see it arena at all they are reading can you see Patricia's comment on the screen? I'm saying no, because I don't see it. You don't see it because all right. So, hmm. I don't see it. So Patricia, you okay. have to type it maybe in caps, and maybe I can see it with the sun shining. But I just recognize. Okay, I probably can switch it on on the on my Facebook. Maybe you're just saying, hey, hi, how great it is. But um, one of the things that in terms of what you just shared about perceiving the left side and the right side and the energy, it's, it's that idea that, yes, just as you say, as you're a trained physicist, that energy exists. So to, to allow oneself to actually note that there's energy, right? There's energy present is a step forward in in coming into unison with the vibration that one is experiencing. I like to choose with my clients to, you know, just to, to shift that word conflict, because usually the conflict already makes somebody feel a little ugh, stressed, right? So I would say that when you're experiencing some opportunity to grow, I would just rephrase it a little differently, right? because that's really what it is, is when we have those moments, it's that moment where you're feeling just a little separate, right? There's one part of you one way or the other, however you want to do it, but it's, it's that coming together to know that you're going to be better and you're going to be thriving and you're going to be in tune and it's an exciting time. So it's, it's a time to embrace. And I love your analogy of dancing and loving, right? Because Really, that's what it is when we can let something go and notice the energies around us, then we become oh, just lighter and brighter. Yes, and uh, uh, what else I want to mention here, that the energy around you, you create, the things surrounding yourself, the books, there, maybe courses you buy online or you are it's imprinted in your mind, in your memory, and you bring in this inside your home, and you surrounding yourself with all this stuff, and then you start associating yourself. Sometimes, after some courses, you can tell yourself that you're not good enough or you are not ready. The thing is, we are ready. Yeah. You are born ready to understand that and accept it that you are enough and. Kind of like you have to help yourself to create that moment 
when you are able to say, I am enough. I am enough to move forward to the next level. I am enough to, to be intolerable to that fear. I am good enough to be bold and creative. I'm bold enough to, to, to present what I have to the world because if you will never present it to the world, because like what you teach in Jacqueline and what we are doing now, we are expressing ourselves and we are presenting to the world what we can exactly right now because yes, we are wishing to live so long, but yeah. you never know what can happen tomorrow. And I'm wishing really that they have enough longer time to live on this planet, planet and I'm wishing to everybody to do that. But everyone has a message inside to our next generation, for example. And if my mom, I look because at your kids, how they are, how creative they are, and amazing daughters you have, and you give them amazing names, destiny and face. And <laughs> Really, like I am imagining, of course, we cannot choose a parent, we cannot choose a country where we were born. Unfortunately, I've been born a little bit in a kind of like um, in the iron fence uh, in the country. And I wanted, but my spirit was free. Mm -hmm. And why my spirit was free, I was always thinking about that because I'm meeting a lot of. Uh, Russian people or from Soviet Union people who uh, didn't go through that transformation that I did. What was inside me that driving me to become that free? Hmm. And I remember that. Uh, if I could share this, because yeah, please do. Happened. I've been living in the city where, uh, like a closed city, where in the school were teaching us political dissidents or um, researchers who were not allowed to work in the Moscow. And, uh, and they were sent far away from, from the capital and somehow they were teaching us sometimes in the school while they, they have to teach at the university. And they were so free. They were talking to us about different world, about different mentality, about different mindset, about the freedom, about the spirit. Um, it's, it's kind of like totally different thing. And even I was eight, nine, ten. I, I, I started absorbing all that energy from those people because sometimes really a stranger can change your life. Mm -hmm. Because if you are really kind of, when these things is happening, I believe these things is happening when you are fully present. And why this happened to me when I was traveling? Because at that moment, I'm away from my thoughts. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm totally present in the moment. Mm -hmm. So when you're present in the moment, it's kind of the, the energy is opening up for you. And you start absorbing the things, the things which can help you to develop your skills and talent or to develop your marketing or to develop your message, what you right, want right. to do. It is really important to be present. And Feng Shui, for example, helps you to create the sense of presence even without traveling. Like you have to have a corner inside your home where you uh, uh, could sit and meditate and find a place and to feel that connection, to download something what you're asking questions. Because this is really important, Jacqueline. I want to ask you, it's like, do you have this place inside your home where you able to channel or ask questions when they arise in your life? Um, um. I think I mean, which is that side. So, so I, I did have an altar or things at one point in my life. Now I just feel like being present at any time and anywhere is where, where the universe is. Yes. And 
I do feel like why so many of my videos or even the interviews I do outside is because I want people to realize that this, this out here, this whole world that was created for us, you know, the air that is, is part of our being. It's, it's not just our home. And so in, you, you hit on a couple great things there that I just wanted to, to like highlight is when you talk about allowing, you know, um, being aware of other people and the corners and the books and different things. So for instance, if you've got books, when you talked about people, there could be books that aren't just about not being good enough. There could be books about you've been a, a, a romance reader, but the romances haven't had the happy endings. They're all broken hearted, right? You know, yeah. um, or you've got horror, mo horror books by Stephen King in your house. <laughs> like, look around at some of those books that you actually have and feel the energy as we we're talking just about the left and the right, because generally when you're in a state of fear you're unable to be present to what the love that's there right it's one or the other so notice that and the other is about the corners of your room when you were sharing is i noticed when my when when my daughter's left right when i came back home i had to turn lights on in different corners of the room right? In, in different places in the house, it was like I had to activate that space. I had to sage different areas. It was it was a feeling I just went to. It wasn't, a, you know, something logical. But as I shifted, it was like, no, this space needs something, something activated in there. So I'm just going to leave the light on for, you know, in one case, one light stayed on for about 36 hours before I got the feeling that, okay, I can turn it off. So... I, I feel the more that you're present, as you're talking about, in your house, you just naturally feel good in some places. And there's places that you'll have to admit that maybe you don't even like going. Right? That you don't even like to step into that room. So what is it there? What do you need to do? What what would someone do, Arena? If, if there's like a room that they just automatically just go, ugh, whether it's because of clutter. Yeah, no one room like that because it's really creates it's really interesting because i can tell you if you know what part of the sector of your room it is it's really deep rooted inside your health mm -hmm. and your mentality and your emotional state of mind it's uh, definitely something somewhere in your mind you don't want to go that's why that room was created inside your home and by by cleaning, of course, first of all, you have to clean that room and you can keep light overnight in, inside that room to rejuvenate that energy. But every time, if something is not moving in your life or something like if you have like this room, okay, you clean, you put completely different stuff inside. But of course, sometimes you can feel even the conflict energy. Uh, for example, if you have um, a wood energy and the fire energy inside that room, which could be cal calculated with Feng Shui, it also can create a sense of fear and it also can create the problems for your health, for example. Uh, if you have a, a kind of experience in this kind of feelings inside your home, in one of the rooms, it's definitely not a good sign. Um, but another thing is always what I mean. You can ring the bell also then in every corner when because it's everything is like creating the right energies inside there. Or you can read your favorite mantras there. Uh, whatever you like to do and you feel the shift or invite somebody inside your home who can help you to... to create this cleansing energy inside the room. And you'll notice immediately the changes in your life. And um, what I want to, uh, today, I want to, my intention was to ask you that you could ask yourself, besides of those roles that you play in life, for example, you are a mother, you are a teacher, you are a leader, you are thriving entrepreneur, online marketer, or who you are, 
this is your role. But with whom you identify yourself, this is the energy which opening the abundance flow for you, your identity. Because with your identity, your feelings is getting attached. It's, this is the energy. That's why I think Shui is, when I am coming inside to any house, I can read their identity. Even you can be a very successful businesswoman, mm -hmm. but I can read your identity with whom you identify yourself. Are you identifying yourself with the happy mother or is a single woman? Are you a happy lover or are you are in a good relationship? Everything around you represents your identity. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, uh, that the one thing what is surrounding you help you to understand who you are. And uh, the, by, by changing that stuff, you will start opening up the layers of that identity. Because from my life, I, the moment I like to uh, get everything perfect, everything successful, and I have to let go of this perfectionism in my life. And that kind of, kind of like thriving in success because I thought people would not love me if I'm a failure, especially man will not find interest in me if I'm not able to make money. They will perceive me like a cheap girl that uh, uh, they have to make money that to, to earn love from somebody or I have to be successful to earn their attention. I was feeling that kind of not worthy enough. And when I start working on my identity, even I look around, I have totally different kind of subjects, sculptures, pictures, books, everything like, yeah. like confirming that what I've created around me. And also the furniture business, which was not very successful here because I didn't do very good marketing. Because I tend, I have a tendency to sell stuff which I like without learning marketing. But to, I was so disappointed that so many people like me with my taste is rare. <laughs> I can <laughs> say it's like one in maybe in 10,000 would like the same things like I am. And the same is, is in marketing. It's really important to study it, to be professional there. You cannot rely only on your intuition. Intuition will come to you when you know your subject. And, um, but it is important to identify yourself. When I start identifying myself with a successful businesswoman who has done mistakes and learn from those mistakes, and that's why she is now much better marketer than she was before, my life starts switching. Right. And I... I start attracting totally different e events and circumstances which were confirming that I'm really a successful marketer. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. yes. that's why I'm, I'm really asking you, if you have one of your identities drags you down, if you feel, uh, if you, how to understand that identity, just sit in a quiet place and ask yourself what you're telling yourself. If you're telling yourself that you are a bad marketer or you are not successful or or you have a blockage or it's kind of obstacle in your life or that it's really like this, just create some kind of opposite identity of your situation because this is the way you create reality. What you focus on, you get. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah and, and that is... That is so relevant, so relevant because I said when I came back, I had to shift everything because the identity of being a mom living with her two daughters, that energy had to shift in the house, right? So it, it, it changed in a different way and my identification. So for others that are watching, one of the things that came to my mind as you were sharing about what makes you uncomfortable is... Maybe what even are you afraid to look at or you're hiding from? And then notice, sometimes people put like, they put like, um, you know, uh, a, a picture behind 
you know, a TV, you know, things like they're, they're objects, like they're, 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 the object is hidden. So just look yeah. around the house. You'll see like the chair is, you know, in front of the half of a door or, you know, you can't open a closet all the way. Like it's, it's like there isn't, you have a blockage there, right? It's, it doesn't necessarily just have to be one room, but if you actually look around and uh, the thing is, is you can all contact arena, right? You, we all have these beautiful smartphones now that you can walk around your house and she can see what your house is like and she can identify from Norway, anywhere in the world, what's really going on. So she can tell you, she can share with you and you can have that shift and open up and allow the abundance to flow. So you may know there's something going on, but you may already just feel, you may feel like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. Well, that's why we're here. And that's where Arena's gift is. So reach out and get in contact with her and start the shift in your home and allow everything to start to flow for you. Yes. It's actually uh, also it's all about looking at the things and finding another side. Everything what you look at is this, it's kind of, you can be surrounded by different stuff. Uh, but the thing is how you look at that. If you look at that and this stuff is creating kind of inspiration for you, motivation, and this is really what you want, it creates inside you a feeling of abundance, wealthy, that you're moving forward, keep it. But sometimes even, you know, for some people, the ugly stuff for me, for them it looks beautiful, we all different. And from which side to look at that? Right. So it's, it's really private. If it's inspiring you, if it works for you, if you are happy with your life mm -hmm. and uh, you don't feel that something is stopping you on the way, then you are in the right place. I mean, it's like you are in the flow. You're just experiencing some challenges, some spices in your life. And this is the life about, to be happy about the challenges. What comes next? Yes, this is for today. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say something, Jacqueline? Yeah, I was going to say there's always a solution when you want there to be a solution. Just to open and be present and you'll get an answer. And then trust it and follow it. And convince yourself. It's kind of like what I'm thinking. Uh, like what you do, what we do. Uh, it's it's really healing with the presence mm -hmm. healing with the presence you can heal yourself in the presence of another person mm -hmm. when you open your heart and allow that person to share their heart with you mm -hmm. because if you are not able to do it alone you need to have assistance you need to have a guide uh, to how to do it correct and the same time what i do with feng shui because i'm really believing that the energy you can create a healing space with shui inside your house. It will heal your soul. It will. It's really it will heal you physically because you will start sleeping much better, and you start kind of you easily will start appearing visions and the creative thoughts. And you, this is the different vortex in your life. If you. If you don't have that energy inside your house, it means you have to recreate it because your house is a is, is really a sacred place. It's your kingdom. Yeah. You have to protect it from that energy and you have to cultivate the best energy and you this house should give you energy, not to take your energy. Right. Yeah. And I just had an analogy. So if if you've ever, anybody that's listening here, ever gone to an astrologer or looked up your horoscope or checked out, um, you know, gone to a tarot card reader or a psychic and you're asking them, okay, when you have Arena see your house, she can read it and read you like you would go and ask somebody to tell you what's going on in your life. You'll be, if you've never had the experience, have the experience once and decide for yourself because 
I will always remember that first experience when I invited a feng shui practitioner to my house over 20 years ago. And I thought, there's no way she can know these things about me from looking at my house. But it's sometimes it's really, really scary uh, people. True. But sometimes I, I'm thinking, shall I mention it? Or they are like, have you Google about my life <laughs> before entering my house? Yes, it's really how much your house can tell it is. And yes. I would love to talk more about that next week, about the simple little things that we, you have seen, I have seen, you know, that, that people are just unaware of because you're unaware of them right yeah your direction of your house is just telling me immediately about your subconscious goals in life what you want and sometimes uh, you are achieving in the life totally different goals because you are not aware about that mm -hmm. because like it was not the real connection between your mind and between your heart the moment when you were choosing your house and then uh, something happened in your life, then you become more conscious about your goals in life, what do you want at that moment, what do you want to achieve? Because we all looking to achieve more balance in our life. What does it mean balance? It's kind of, if you will look at the wheel of life, of course we have a choices, what to work on, on our relationship, on our wealth, on our career development, for everybody is their own choice, which part of their life uh, they will put attention more to that part. But the more effort we are willing to pay attention to that, the more balance we can get, the more harmony we can get. That's why it is important that every corner inside your house is having a good energy because it supports you in every sphere inside your life. And uh, it's definitely important to know where is located your wealth sector, where is located is your uh, sector of self-development, uh, self-discovery, for example, your career sector. Which direction is your house facing? We will be talking about that next time. It's really, really interesting topic for everyone to discover that. And I will prepare really which direction they can check it with the compass and to tell us later on to what they discovered yes what they is how it's reflecting on their eyes uh, in their life yes beautiful well i hope you all got as much as i got out of this because whenever i talk to arena i always get new glimpses of of the universe really because it's this presence i just my heart just opens up more she's got such beautiful energy and i am delighted that we can come together and do this so I love you. I love you. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you next week. See you next week.